Hello and welcome to the next part of the Tiger Create tutorial series. In this part, we want to start to animate things using a button. For this, I take the ice float here and give it an animation. I start recording the animation, set the first key in the first frame. And then after 60 frames, this means 3 seconds, I want to place the ice float outside of the scene. So I switch to the preview mode and the ice moves to the right. It moves only once because repetition is set to 1. Now I want to start this animation by touching a button. For this I go to the scene assets here. These are the scene assets in the scene navigator and I click on the plus sign and select the button. A button is placed on top of the scene here and I resize it so it's as big as the ice float and place it atop the ice float. I can give it a name here, it's called Untitled Button right now and I call it Ice Float Button. I now scroll down here to the button properties and here you see an empty list. In this list everything is listed that is started when the button is touched. So I need to add some objects here. I go to the plus sign, click it and select the ice float. Now you can see that the start frame is frame 1 of the animation of the ice and the end frame is frame 60. For comparison, I select the ice float here. You can see the animation starts in frame 1 and ends in frame 60. So when I click the button again, that's the values that need to be in here, start frame and end frame. You can select these frames automatically if you want to use all frames by clicking the Use All Frames button. Repetitions is 1. This is the value that is needed. The button then plays the animation that is selected once. Now, I save it and start the preview mode with Command P. And you see nothing happens, but you can see the button here is almost invisible, but uh, we leave the small frame in the preview mode so you can better find your button. In the end result, in the published book, of course, the button is completely invisible. I now click on the button and the ice starts to drift away. When I click it again, the ice drifts away again. So I rewind. Now we don't want this behavior. We just want the button there once and then we click it and the ice should move away. So we now will give the button its own animation. You see here in the animation timeline the ice float button has position, rotation and scale values too. So we record the key in frame 1 this is the position where the button is right now. And then we go to the second frame and we move the button outside. So now the button has an animation that starts at the position where we want to have it and then moves the button outside from frame 1 to frame 2. Now we go to the object list in the button properties and now we add the button to the list and we say okay from start frame 1 to frame 2. This moves the button outside. I now go to the preview mode, click the button and you see the ice floats away and the button is gone too. Let's rewind it. 
and look at it again, I click the button, and what happens is, as soon as the button is touched, first the ice starts to go away to flow to the right, and additionally, the next thing is executed too, the ice float button animation is started from frame 1 to frame 2. And this is the animation where the button is moved outside. You can add lots of things in the object list and everything will start as soon as the button is touched. Now let's try this again with a slightly different animation. I click on Lars, the little polar bear. I start here and I remember the key position and the scale. And then I want to move him after two seconds. I move him back here and scale him down a bit. So this is fine. And then again he should return after two seconds to the starting position. Let's do this on frame 80. For this I go to the starting frame and then I just remember the position and the scale in frame 80 as ending frame. So if we say repetitions is 1th for this animation, repetitions 1th, and we look at it, we have the following result. Lars goes back and comes forth again. And while in the background, we can start the ice float by clicking the button. Go back, rewind, I save for good measure. And now we want to start the Lars animation 2 with a button. So I say, please add another button in the scene assets. I click the plus sign, select button. And then I go to this button here in the generic properties and call it Lars button. I reside the button and put it atop of Lars. So now I go to the button properties. The button is selected. I go to the button properties. I scroll down a bit. Here are the button properties. This is a list of things that should be executed on touch. You see it's empty. For the other button we have the ice float and the ice float button. For this button we now choose large. I go to the plus sign, the list appears, I select large and you see the correct values here are entered automatically from frame 1 to frame 80 is the animation we want to have. Repetitions is 1. I save again and go to the preview mode and you see nothing is happening, but I can click on the ice float, it drifts away. I can click on Lars, he goes back and forward again. The button is still here, so if I click the button again, you see the animation starts again. I go back to the edit mode, and now I want to remove this button for the time of 80 frames, for the time Lars goes back and forward, and then the button should appear again. So I have the Lars button in the animation timeline. I record the first position. In the second frame, I go to the second frame, I move it outside of the screen. After 80 frames, the button should be back again. So I now copy this position to frame 79. You see it's the same. And then I copy the first position, the starting position, with a key to frame 80. And you see you go there, I scrub over, and after 80 frames the button comes back. Now I click on the button again, and in the object list I add the button, Lars button to itself. It too has 80 frames. So when we look at it in the preview mode and I click it, Lars starts to move away and back in 80 frames and after 80 frames 
the button is back again and you can click it. Additionally, you can add sounds to a button. Look into the button properties. There's a click sound list. I click on it and say scene 03 father. That's when Lars yells father. Exactly. Now go to the preview mode again and I click Lars. Father. He yells father. Goes back and forth at the edge of the eyes looking for his father. And that's it for now. This is basic button animation. Enjoy Tiger Crate. Bye bye.